Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by our channel. Um, so today we're going to be talking about deception. And in this lesson we'll discuss deception and how we can protect ourselves against it if we recognize deception by the devil in our everyday lives and prepare for big deception to this world and how we can do that and accomplish that. I want to start off by saying to me where I believe the first time deception was used was actually in heaven when Satan started to believe himself to be something greater than God or think he was greater or whatever the case was he was already in a sense deceiving himself and lying to who he about who he was and what he was and that's a good point to just remember right off the bat because if the first one who used deception was Satan that tells you where that that type of thing comes from but anyways let's go ahead and jump right into it so what's the importance about deception especially in the day and age that we're living in well I can look in revelations and, and say that the upcoming events with the Antichrist is the main reason why we got to be on guard and aware of of deceivers because the ultimate deceiver is about to land on this earth and lead us all astray. I mean, deceit can run in lots of different forms. There's uh, things that appear good on the outside that what's wrong with that type of thing. I'm going to use this as an example of like the Black Lives Matters movement. True, truthfully, Black Lives do matter, but they're segregating it to a certain type of person on their outside, their appearance. That's, that's, equality is what we all should have. We should all have the freedom and equality not to be slaved by men. I agree that the, like, the black, blacks have been treated, mistreated lots of times throughout history. We can find it all over the Bible and, and just all over time. Um, it's not a bad thing, but see, the deceit comes from causing these people to be divided and believing that one life matters one type of life matters i'll tell you god doesn't think that at all he thinks all our lives matter he loves every race every color of your skin it's not a superficial thing it's based off of what you're inside and that's what satan's goal is with those types of things it appears good but he wants you to focus on outer appearance because he doesn't want to, us to look into our hearts and what's in us what, what god's planted as a seed inside our hearts he wants to just tell you it's it's what about you what about me myself what what can i gain what do i lose you know well with god you don't lose anything you don't lose anything he gives you glory he gives you a kingdom to go live in if we sh if we choose it and make it there if we follow the truth it's all lies and deception has some truth in it but I'll tell you, all, all truth, there's not a, a single spot of a lie in it. When it's true, it's true. It's very important not to forget what the difference between, you know, a, a half truth is or a partial truth. Almost sounds good, almost the right thing, but there's always the after of deceit. And when the Antichrist comes, it's going to be... It's going to look like a good thing on the outside. Miracles, and maybe even causing the world peace for once. And I, I strongly advise you to remember that more than likely on this earth, because of Satan, there will not be world peace here until God comes and takes us home. You can't have peace without God. And the leaders of this world are, are on a mission very strongly to make us believe that there could be world peace here with their agendas that are not true to, to it. You know, the constitution said, we the people, not we the certain race of people. I mean, I think people forget that. Satan has to pull every trick in the book to keep people from seeing his glory. How does he do this? Jesus says, Satan is a liar and the father of lies in John eight. All lies ultimately have their origins in him. Lies are his strategy for blinding the minds of each generation to the glory of Christ. The lies take different forms in each generation, but the overarching strategies has been essentially the same 
since the Garden of Eden. Now here in Psalms 12, it points to the three brands of deception and all of which Satan uses to keep people from seeing the light and the glory of Christ. The three varieties of deception are vanity, flattery, and blasphemy. And in Psalms 12, it reads, everyone utters lies to his neighbor. Several commentaries point out that this word translated lies here literally means emptiness. David had particularly type of deception in view. Everyone utters emptiness to his neighbor. They could hardly be more powerful description of our culture today. Satan's vanity brand aims to keep you from ever thinking seriously about life. It is possible to go to high school or college or career or retirement without ever seriously asking, who am I and why am I here? What's this life for and what lies beyond? Satan is in the business of blinding people's minds so that they cannot see the light and the glory of Christ. It is possible to go to church and hang out with your friends and never think seriously about the meaning of life. Vanity is one, one of Satan's primary strategies for accomplishing this. The next will be flattery. With flattery lips and a double heart they speak from Psalms 12. May the Lord cut off all the flattery lips. Flattery always comes, be, becomes the spoken language in the culture where people give themselves to vanity. I'm, it's saying only the, what other people want to hear and hearing only what uh, you want to say to people. Flattery is Satan's second brand of deception. If you only hear what you want other people to say, then you end up not being able to see the light. This, this desire for flattery runs deep. I, Isaiah describes God's people as children unwilling to hear the instructions of the Lord who say to the seers, do not see, and the prophets do not prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us smooth things. Let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 30, 9 through 11. That sounds pretty bad to me. <laughs> Wanting to hear only what sounds good to your own self and what people want to focus on and what, what matters to them in this flesh life, you know. It's pretty, pretty selfish even, you could call it. Jesus said, The work of the Holy Spirit begins with convincing of sin and righteousness and judgment. There won't be much of that going on in the flattering ministries that stroke our egos by saying smooth things. That kind of ministry only, only leads to a generation of kids who grow up in the church and yet cannot see the light and the glory and gospel of Jesus Christ. Our Lord spoke about this in John 5, 44. How can you believe when you receive the glory from one another and, do, and not seek the glory that comes from the only God? It's almost like a feel good type of thing. Like you feel like you're doing the right thing. You're praising. Everyone's excited. But is it more for praising God and worshiping God? Or is that more for your self gratification so you feel good? See, that that's, could be a form of deception within itself. Not not doing it for what it, what the purpose is intended for, to praise God, thank you, thanking Him for His Son, but rather, so I feel good today. So I did I did good for myself. There's nothing wrong with you know making sure you're happy, but your happiness should be aligned with what God is and what He has done for us. So next is blasphemy. Those who say. With our tongues we will prevail, our lips are with us, who is the master o over us. Psalms 12.4 This third branch of lying shows itself in defiance. The person who has bought this clenches his or, or her fist and says, It's my life. I'm the captain of the ship. No one rules this life but me. I will find my own way. I will be my own lord and savior, my own master, my own guide. And I say to those people, good luck. <laughs> But the word to describe that is blasphemy, if you look up in the dictionary, it reads the act of insulting or showing contempt for God, or the act of claiming the attributes of a deity. 
In other words, it's putting yourself in the place of God. And this is a brand of deception that goes back to the Garden of Eden when Satan told Eve, you shall be like a God. So vanity, flattery, and blasphemy are Satan's three primary strategies. That's the world our children are growing up in. That's the world we're growing up in. Deception is easy to believe because the lies people want to believe are simply what they'd rather hear than rather hear the truth. People don't want to hear the truth about relationships that isn't healthy because people are attached to the lies and the lustful vanity of what they want and they are deceived by outer toxicity and don't want to hear the truth that it's best for the relationship to be over. It's one example of that, you know, just... And I'll stick it out because, you know, it's easier for me, it's best for me. But do you stop and think about it? Is it really good for you? Is it really leading you to the path of God and to find Jesus and seek Jesus in all things? Or is it leading to a self-gratifying feeling, something that feels good to you, but does it benefit those around you, yourself, your family, your friends, anything? Is it bringing any light into your world? I hardly doubt it. They'd rather, you know, have someone to tell them to hold on to a lie and tell them to stay in a toxic relationship. The same example can be used for a career change, promotion, title, or in, other, in any other worldly things that appears to be good, but is a superficial ego boost that might not be good for them because it's something they want for the wrong reasons. It looks good or sounds too good to be true on the outer appearance, but is it something that you need, need and why do you want it? Important questions to ask yourself. Don't just jump into decisions without actually asking a question and thinking about the answer first. A lot of people tend to just rush into anything, jobs, careers, relationships, bad, bad decisions without giving it a second thought. There's a time when you need to just slow down, be patient about it, pray about it, and see if God gives you the answers, you know? He'll, he'll lead you in the right path. Yeah, your new promotion might give you, what, $5 raise and you're making a lot of money, but ultimately, you don't know if that's the best thing for you. Yeah, money's good and all in this world, but will you be happy in that position? Will the stress make you, you know, lose it and make you your joy just go away but you're making more money right you know that's good or is it if you're if you're getting down and you dread going to work because that job's just too much stress or the people involved with, with it with you and ultimately you're not going to be a happy person so that five dollar raise is not worth it give it to god pray to god ask him for guidance in your lives because God is truth. One thing God never will do, ever lie to you and never deceive you. And never give you false hope, which is another form of deceit too, is false hope. A promise is something that can't be delivered, you know. Give it to God. Here in Colossians 2.8, it reads, See that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human traditions and according to the elemental spirits of this world, and not according to Christ. Jesus told us to be on guard and to be careful so that no man would deceive us. And he tells us this much of deception would come from the people who would be using his name. And even some people would be so deceived, they, they would literally claim to be Christ. How can this be? Is it because the devil uses people to counterfeit the true gift of God? and the true anointing of God? How can we know the difference? Well, Jesus said, look at their fruits. One of our major faults as Christians is that we tend to quote men on certain subjects instead of referring to the Bible, the book God gave us. We, re we recognize that God gave us men to lead us to the truth of God, but our problem becomes who are true men of God and who are the false ones that Christ has warned us about. Sometimes we tend to evaluate men according to the size of their ministry, their popularity with men, or their own endowment of certain gifts, etc. On and on and on. 
Jesus spoke about a time when deception will be especially great, when false messiahs and false prophets will appear. Even the people of God could be deceived if we're not for God's uh, providential protections, for his simple love of giving us the true word and what to look out for, what to be observant of so that we, we aren't deceived. He, he doesn't want that for us. It reads uh, here in uh, Matthew 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, and if possible, even the elect. All these deceptions are instigated by the devil. But mind you, however, in 2 Thessalonians 2, it also speaks of deception as God's punishment on people who re refuse to believe the truth. The context, context seems to be similar to to that of the gospel passages above that I had just mentioned um, and speaks of the one to come and who will be especially deceptive. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with the power of the false signs, wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are, are perishing because they refused to love and the truth and so be saved. And it says, therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's a strong warning that, that's given to us right there. God, God speaks about the fact if you want to believe the lies so much, especially when he's, this is in reference to the end days, by the way, where, where he, he'll, he'll allow you to believe that own lie. If you if you like, oh, no, this is the truth, this is the truth, you know, without knowing it's the truth, you, God will let you believe that lie and be deceived by the lawless man, by the Antichrist, in other words. And it's not him himself deceiving you, it's yourself deceiving you, allowing Satan to deceive you. But, you know, it's, sometimes it's it, things like that have to be done. You know, fine. You think you're right. Fine. You think, you know, let's see, you know, and I promise you, you won't end up right. You'll realize that you believed a lie. And that scariest part is you, you lie to yourself. I mean, I think if it, we should always have trust in God, but if anyone in this world that we should trust in, I think it should be our own self. And if you make it to where you can't even tell yourself the truth, you can have a rough time going forward. It's not going to be an easy path. Don't believe a lie to draw close to him and allow his light to enable us to see the truth and not be fooled by the distorted, twisted truth Satan desires for us to see. Jesus is the light. He also is the truth. As light clarifies what our eyes see, so Jesus clarifies the truth who God is. Self-deception is too, too common in our fallen world now. Nowadays, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Can't even trust our own, our, le our own leaders, our own people in charge of, of our well-being. It's come to a pretty sad point in life, you know, and that's all because most of those people are working in and operating in Satan's lie and deceit. It's not truth. It's not, it's not meant to lead you to the right path to help your life in any form, shape, or way. It's meant to lead you to a dark place of destruction where you're without God. Our own hearts are deceitful so much so that we easily fool ourselves. Human pride always blinds us to the truth. It promises honor, but delivers disgrace. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. No one is immune to deception. In fact, thinking you can't be deceived means you are already are. Oh, I couldn't be deceived. That's a lie. We're deceived easily in this world. When you do something wrong and you know it's wrong, that's not deception. That's making a really poor choice. 
the only deception is this is the idea that we are no going to have no consequences of what we were doing thinking oh there's no wrong in that truthfully it's wrong therefore you're deceiving yourself as i mentioned earlier true deception is much deeper it comes when you get swept away from by a wrong idea but you've convinced yourself that it's the truth that's what timothy was talking about when he said for the time is coming when people will no longer listen to the sound of the wholesome teaching they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear they will reject the truth and chase after myths and that's from second timothy 4 3 through 4 but I'm going to go ahead and end this in a prayer. Dear God, when evil darkness uh, uh, in this world, we pray that you give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubt assails us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us a vision. And when we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and the purpose in doing your will. May us remember Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he did on that cross for us, dear Lord. May we keep our eyes on you and the things above, above this world. Give us the strength, courage, and, and thank you for the tools you have given us to be on guard against the evil one. It's all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all, and I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. And uh, tune into our future videos.